the physical limitations or physical standards. That's the conversation we're having right now. <clears throat> the other is over this concept of unit cohesion, that somehow a fighting force is more effective when it is cohesive. And the argument is that a, that a fighting force of all men is better able to bond and, and, and work towards a common goal. And if you introduce a woman into it, you just introduce extraneous things, such as sexual attraction, sexual harassment. Sex, period. Sex, period. Is there not, is there not merit to that argument? Um, no, <laughs> there's not. It's all about leadership. And frankly, those are the same arguments that people made when we were integrating the military, when we were looking at the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. All those units are still working. They're very strong. Um, and it talks, it is, the question is, um, are, um, are, are you leading the unit? Are you meeting a mission? Are you training everyone to the same standards? And women are already in units. Again, this is not a new concept. Women are already serving in these units, and they're doing a very good job. Kingsley, I'm going to give you the last quick question. I'm going to read a little bit from this colonel who sure. said this. The Army is not a sociological laboratory. To be effective, it has to be organized, trained according to the principles which will ensure success. Experiments, blah, 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 are a danger to efficiency, discipline, morale, and would result in ultimate defeat. Is this essentially what you're saying? I think that that's uh, true with respect. I don't think it's true with respect to ultimate defeat of the United States in a war. I think that what's likely to recur, occur, though, is the defeat of the United States in small battles, so, uh, so which me... means that people are going to die. So now, now you were talking about sex, and it was it was it was sort of disputed that there was going to be there would be sexual distractions. But uh, but large numbers of women fail to deploy with their units because of pregnancy. Large numbers of women are shipped home because of pregnancy. Something caused that pregnancy, and my guess is it was sex. Well, so was Zoe's break, saying it's not true, but I, I want to go back to that quote I read you. You know what that was from? That was a guy in 1941, and that argument was about not allowing black people in the military. That was his exact argument well, of why blacks should not be allowed in the military because it's a danger to efficiency and discipline and morale and will result in ultimate defeat. So it sounds to me like that's kind of well, an... That's actually a that's a pretty weak analogy, though, because uh, race and sex are different. Race is, of course, biological. That's why black parents have black children and white Same parents argument, have white though. children. Uh, but, 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 but the reason for the, the exclusion of blacks had nothing to do with the biological differences. It had everything to do with the social construction that we put on them, the view of white superiority and racial inferiority, cohesion, which led to segregated, segregated schools, segregated, segregated uh, um, uh, bathrooms, segregated drinking fountains. No, no one thinks that segregated unit. bathrooms by no one thinks that bath, segregation of bathrooms by sex is wrong, or that it's wrong that we have a women's NBA. Uh, th that's not apartheid. So the argument about race is different from the argument about sex, it's and I think you have to evaluate each one it's on the merits. Exactly the same argument about cohesion. Those words are the same except argument. Except you could get you could get you blacks and whites interact the way they, they do because that's what the way they've learned. You look throughout the world, and you look throughout the. I'm out of time, so we've got to stop the, the conversation here. So